All right, hello everybody. I am here with two very special guests. I'll have them introduce themselves. We'll start on the right. Uh, hello, my name is Melissa Berger, visual artist and vice president for the Surrey Art Gallery Association. My name is Becky Miller, fine artist as well. Fantastic. And we are already familiar with these two lovely ladies because they were all part of the art show at Metro Theatre uh, earlier this season. And we brought them back for a very special discussion about um, art and its costs and why art costs as much as it does. So I guess I'll open up the floor. Maybe I'll get an answer from both each of you. Um, let's start with why do you price the way you price? First start. Yeah, go for it. Um, so, like any skill, it's something that's learned. Mm -hmm. uh, many of us go to school, and many of us also practice for thousands of hours. Mm -hmm. um, so, pricing art is it can be tricky because it can be the sentiment, sentimental attachment to a piece, mm -hmm. as well as time and also materials. You agree? Okay. Yeah. Um, so it can be really tricky, right? Because it may only take five hours, but maybe that took a whole 10 years to get to that point. So it's about the experiences of creating art and also getting better. Um, so yeah. Awesome, and how do you feel about it? Right? Very similar, yeah, very similar. I also feel that there's a lot of you know, behind the art, besides the training, it's the conceptualization, which can take 50 hours and it really is a lifetime of putting your experiences together with the subject matter mm -hmm. and you know if it's just taking from a photograph and just transposing that's one thing but when you're creating something out of completely nothing you have to pull from so many avenues that you can't it's even difficult to put a price on that that's fair enough yeah. absolutely and um, when is is our material something you take into a cost? Like for a lot of people, when they go into an art store, they don't realize that you know a tube of titanium white, depending on its size, could be anywhere from twenty to forty dollars, right? Oh yes, that could last one painting, or that could last twenty paintings. Yeah, is that something you take into consideration as well? So I keep a spreadsheet on my expenses. Mm -hmm. um, art supplies alone every year uh, around five thousand dollars. Yeah, so very, very expensive. Yeah. I guess I had to get an actual real job just so that I could be <laughs> Support it, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And how about when, I believe both of you have done commissions, right? Yeah. Perfect. So why don't we talk a little bit about commissions when somebody approaches you guys and you're willing to take on that project. How do you have that discussion with somebody of cost, time, uh, and product, concept? Uh, concept? All those kinds of things. What's what's some of the stuff you talk about? Uh, so when I do a commission, um, generally I charge two dollars per square inch. So it would be the height times the width times two, and that is how I derive my price. And what I do is I get half up front. Every artist is a little different, but I do half up front. Um, and then when I'm getting close to the finish of a piece. Um, I start giving images and updates, some, but some uh, patrons or collectors don't want that. They just want to see the end result, that means they trust you. But ones that are still like you, like not used to paying artists for uh, commissions, um, it's good to sort of uh, you know, update them. So what, what I, the way that I do it is I do half up front, um, and then when we're both happy, because often I'm not happy and they might be happy, <laughs> then they pay the rest and I ship it. And then they pay for shipping. Um, and not so much packaging because I just use recycled packaging. Cool. What I do is um, depend on the client. Sometimes they're very cool and eco economical, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're not busy. So sometimes it's just really worth just doing a painting, mm -hmm. and that's a completely different benefit than mm -hmm. if you're dealing with someone who has to buy buying a picture for his wife, and he doesn't really care what that. Yeah. And you know, it really based it's based on what the client will pay, and it's actually a sad. It's a sad state because what you should be charging, can't because the economy does not support that. And again, because the patron doesn't understand what you're creating for them, they don't understand what you give. So it's it's a give and take, and you realize if you want to do some work, sometimes you're doing it for nothing, basically just materials and sometimes you're making a profit. 
So it, it just depends on what you want to do and how you want to do it. And this also sounds like it's a little bit of a personal battle as well of, okay, this is something I really want to do and I'm going to take on. Exactly. And that costs me time and money because I really want to do it for you yeah. and you only have X amount of dollars. Okay, I'll do it for you so this time. <laughs> and they we'll love that, time. right? And they love that and I'm like, okay, fine. And you hope that that would feed into the next time. That really just shoots you in the foot. You really don't get that, you know, continual growth from those kids. They aren't in the same way that they need to be growing. And I think um, that it depends on the popularity as well, which isn't always fair because you look at some art and you're like, how how are they pricing their artwork like that? Right? So even artists feel that way. Yes. Right. Yeah. I've had several clients come to me and be like, I don't understand. The, the, the relationship and you said exactly. It's the popularity and so it's a hype. Um, and so, yeah, like that kind of dictates how you price things and it doesn't always make a lot of sense, right? But it's not just art, like people are also buying a piece of you and I think it becomes a brand and also what you stand for that people gravitate. I do want to talk about you guys and your upcoming projects if you're okay with that because I know you've got a few so this is like a, we all want to hear about it because you, you're now familiar to the metro audience which yeah, is exciting yeah. so do you want to share some of the things that are coming up about yeah. what you're doing uh, so we are having an upcoming pop-up art show at Beecher Place in Crescent Beach um, so there's four artists there's uh, myself Yvette Carla Mascal and Joanne Dennis uh, we are an art collective called the Diversify Brush. The reason why we have named ourselves that is because all our styles are completely different. Nice. Yeah. Um, the show is called The Land We Occupy. So it's about our environment and the influences on us, or maybe our influences on the environment, um, and what that looks like to each artist. Um, and that is, the grand opening is April 19th, and that goes till April 30th. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe want to talk about the other thing? Yeah, well I've got one, I've got a show from at the Newton Gallery from the May 1st to the 30th mm -hmm. with Chow Chow Yang oh, and yeah. um, we're calling it the beautiful vibration, nature versus the urban experience. She's mm -hmm. a nature painter and I am a more street artist. So we're mixing that up, so we're going to see how that goes. And then Melissa and I have also put together a, a, a prospectus to do an installation in New West for the Business of Crew Association. And we're on our second round uh, to put that together for them. Mm -hmm. And we're planning on putting a paint by number mural for the community to actually participate in the creation of the art. Very so cool. that they can create and be part of its creation. So maybe this discussion won't be so foreign to them. They mm -hmm. see how hard it is or how amazing it is and what the effort it takes to put it into the art. I think that might be an amazing learning experience for the people. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And well, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say uh, we haven't gotten the proposal yet, so fingers <laughs> crossed. Uh, we have an interview coming up uh, with the BIA of New Westminster, mm -hmm. um, and also part of doing a community art installation is um, telling people about the art studios, mm -hmm. about New West, um, and and we are looking for community partners. So you know, even if you want to leave some pamphlets about the Metro Theater with us, we can hand those out. So we'll have a little okay. sort of resource table to sort mm -hmm. of connect people with the arts a little more. Mm -hmm. um, and Yvette and myself are kind of working towards um, building on grants and community art. And that's kind of where we want to go together because, mm -hmm. of course, we're a wicked team and yeah. there's no stopping <laughs> us. <laughs> Got the skills and the talent, right? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> That's really awesome, you guys. Well, I hope that Metro audiences and Instagram audiences will come out and support these lovely ladies in their upcoming projects. Uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time. We really, really appreciate it. it. So we'll see you all soon. Bye.